What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick, coming to you from a very gray Las Vegas, Nevada. Ooh, Look how gray it is out season. there. Right? Monsoon season. It could start pouring on us. Uh, my yeah. partner, Michael Deeb, is coming to you from San Francisco, where it's always gray and wet. What's up, Michael Deeb? Always gray. Yeah. Oh, man, it's here in San Francisco. Uh, it's like uh, it could ruin here as well. So let's see what happens. Well, there it is. Uh, so what do we do on this site uh, or this channel? People people that are new, the, our new nerds out there, if you haven't hit the subscribe, <laughs> like, and notification button, please do so now. Uh, spread the word about the nerd. And, uh, hey, I just rhymed. Uh, listen, what we do on this show is we <laughs> dig through... All the automotive enthusiast auction sites uh, so that you don't have to. We find the most interesting car of the day. We talk about that car. We tell you all about it. And then we make a prediction as to what will happen with that car's auction. And just like that, boom, snap, you'll get to see what happened. You'll get to see how much it sold for or didn't. You get to see the end of the auction. We'll talk about uh, that auction right here in this episode, uh, and you won't have to wait a week like we do. Uh, so let's get right to today's car. Uh, this is this car is a winner, man. I oh, now this car is kind of this, this car is definitely interesting. It has some aspects Ch that we're gonna have to get to, but holy cow, is this right. not JP. a holy grail? Uh, now, I know lies are illegal in Nevada, but are you aware that the Mega Millions, which is in like 16 states, is currently up to $790 million? Are you aware of that? Uh, I am. Our good friend uh, yeah. and friend of the show, Jason Alter, uh, yesterday drove down to Arizona uh, to yes. the border, and I'm thinking of maybe <laughs> yeah. doing the same thing. As, as, soon as, soon as soon as we hang up, I'm out of here. I'm going to yeah. take patootie. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is... This is when when one of the nerds wins the lottery, we're both getting one of these. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like this is mm. this is unbelievable. And really, really good friend and, and uh, namesake of the studio, uh, our buddy Rami uh, is now a proud owner of 993 RS. Uh, this is a bucket list holy grail car, if ever there was one. Uh, Bring a trailer has sourced this car um, from Graham Rahal, uh, Bob Rahal's son, who currently races in like IndyCar. Uh, Graham owns a, a car dealership in Brownburg, Indiana, and Graham does what you and I would do if we were kids with a lot of money. Um, he goes out and buys really fascinating, interesting, exotic cars. He drives them around for a couple of weeks, and then he puts them for sale through his dealership. So he's got like an Acura dealership that sells million-dollar exotic cars every other month. So Graham has sourced this 1996 Porsche 911 Carrera RS with just 22,000 miles. Uh, um, he imported the car. The car was originally sold in Japan. It was moved to the UK and then to France. And he imported the car this year from France. Now, I gave that same history on the BMW M1 that we looked at a couple days ago. Uh, but that that lineage is correct to this car. Um, they made about a thousand cars in a two-year period. They're still very, very rare. This car is very nice because... Uh, aside from fancy yellow paint job, this car has been treated to some parts that were common on the 993 RS Sport, such as that big, bodacious biplane rear wing and those really incredible sport back uh, seats. Um, if it were a true club sport, it would also have a welded in roll cage. This is a standard RS with a couple of uh, cosmetic club sport pieces. Uh, these cars. All the RSs had a seam welded chassis that makes the car very rigid and thus allows the suspension to do its job better because the chassis isn't flexing. The cars are lightweight because they employ thinner glass. This car also has an aluminum hood. The 3.6 liter motor is punched out to 3.8 liter where Porsche says it makes 300 horsepower. But the general consensus is these cars make more than 10% more than that. It would not surprise me if this car actually made like 330 horsepower at the tires. Um, they all use the what we call the endurance tank, the big oversized 75 liter gas tank. The cars have multi-piece 18 inch speed line wheels. Um, and uh, when Graham got the car, his dealership put in the Porsche Classic radio. So this is really kind of the best of both worlds because you kind of get the club sport look, but you don't have to climb over a roll cage and drop yourself into a racing seat. Um, it's got the updated radio and the car is titled in the United States. Um, these cars only just became legal for importation uh, and, and they're still super rare in this country. 
uh, Rami and JP will tell you as soon as he drives this, uh, Rami's car, these are arguably one of the best driving 911s of all time. They are just, the steering is telepathic, the cars feel lightweight, and that motor feels way peppier than just 300 horsepower. Um, so I'm fortunate, I've driven one a couple of times and I just think they're amazing. They're a little out of my price range or budget, uh, but I just cannot say enough nice things about this. This is just easily one of the best, probably the best air-cooled driving 911 they ever made. Uh, a huge, huge fan, my favorite. Uh, JP, have you driven Rami's car yet? Did you I, have that red one we had? Uh, I, you know, yes, the red one, yes, but I did, but just around the, uh, you know, the dealership. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, but no, I have not driven Rami's yet. Um, he, oh. so we went and we went and drove. Uh, we drove his G wagon, his G fifty five, to L A to pick it up. They flew it in from from the U K. Right? Uh, yeah. They didn't ship it. They flew it in. Uh, so yeah. when we went and got that car, I'm sure it was totally illegal for us to drive it. They just handed him the keys and they're looking around like, like, <laughs> where's the truck? And he's like, oh, I'm driving. I'm like, okay. You know, just like you, just <laughs> yeah. like we're we're not saying anything. Uh, you know, it still had the Euro plates on it. Yeah, uh, so we drive it out of there. We drive through L.A. traffic. You know, at, you know, at, by by LAX and just the worst part of town. Uh, we met our friend the professor uh, at yep. the uh, at our favorite uh, espresso place there by his house. Um, habitat. The habitat, correct. Yeah. Uh, and then from there. He was like, you want to drive it? I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not driving this thing (laughs) through the city. Forget that. Um, But he's like, all right, well, I guess so. We're going to drive back to Vegas. And I'm like, well, why don't we take the crest, the back way up to Victorville? He's like, oh, my God, that's a great idea. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. I wish I had thought of it before we left for L.A. that morning. I would have suggested we bring his GT3 RS uh, yeah. to LA because then I could have driven that back instead of the G wagon because driving a G 55 behind a guy uh, on the crest for a hundred miles behind someone driving one of these, uh, yeah. man, I was yeah. sweating bullets. Uh, Rami, that, that, yeah. R- R- Rami has no chill. Rami is the most immature driver of all time. He's got good <laughs> skill, but he has no chill. And uh, Rami is the type of guy that like lick his eyebrows and slick them back, set his hair on fire, and turn up the radio, and then just go like there are no speed limits. So I, I sure you only saw him for a couple of moments. Well, here's it. the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Rami is, please go check out the Rami Show. Uh, that's <laughs> another one of our YouTube channels, the Rami Show. Uh, not Patootie is for not work. happy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Patootie is not happy with the wind outside right now. It is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are in a little bit of a storm here in Las Vegas, but. Look, Rami is, you know, he has an amazing collection of cars and he drives them the way we all want to drive exotic cars. Right. Um, I have never seen him, Deeb, yeah. show this kind of reverence to a car. Uh, yes. This truly is something that he has wanted forever. Uh, and, you know, uh, unlike maybe some of his other cars that are uh, amazing cars, but the cars, you know, you can just get. Um, this is something truly special. Uh, and he knows it. And uh, since it just came from L.A. and it hadn't really been gone through, who knows how long it you know, had been since he drove it. He was like, I'm keeping it yeah. under 4,000 RPMs. Um, wow. you know, and he just babied it all the way back to uh, back to Vegas. But even then, it was impossible to keep up with him. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. He just like, oh, my God, this thing. He's like, this is the most amazing driving car of all time. Everything you've heard about one of these from everyone I know that's driven one, uh, apparently it's true. I mean, just tapping a, on the glass and knowing that it's lighter weight, just you just feel that in every part of the car. Everything on it is precious metal. It's, yeah. it's built by hand uh, at Vysok. Uh, it's a race car, legal for the street, and barely yeah. legal for the street, yeah. just barely. You know what I mean? So it's, well, it's a race car first. And then they made it a street car. You know, so really this cool. car, we start talking about what's something like this worth. I happen to know how much Rami paid for his, and I'm not going to say that on the show. Um, yeah. But look, this particular car that we're talking about, this yellow one, uh, has a big issue. Uh, this car is a salvage title. Um, well, this, no, they're saying that they can't. it's a branded title because they can't verify the mileage. It's a branded Probably. title. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it, because I think it's because... They can't verify it because there's no history on the car. It was just brought in. So I, it's a shame wouldn't, that Wouldn't that's that on there. just be a TMU? Why is that a brand? 
I, I don't know why, but I, I don't think it's going to hold back the buyer of this car. Uh, I think it's kitchen of everything. Now, don't get me wrong. It could fit to sell here, but I have every confidence that Graham Rahal will retail out of this car and get the money he deserves for it. Uh, like I said, Dave Ryan, I just think they, whoever in his office was handling the paperwork, clearly didn't answer the questions correctly when they went to register the car and so now it's sitting on a branded title but it's not because any history of this car when the car was in a wreck they imported the car and i and i think there's good paperwork on the car from overseas and that's written in the description so i agree with you it does have a brand title but this is one of those things where i if you're looking for one uh this is as nice as they come it's got really low miles and i i don't think it's gonna hold it back it there may was here but eventually it'll retail our friend at uh, Nathan Mertz up at uh, Columbia uh, Collector Cars, I think it is, up in Seattle, uh, years ago, he used to run uh, a, an event called 993 Fest. Um, and they had a GT2 Evo uh, at one of at his dealership Ooh. that had a branded title on it. And the reason it had a branded title on it is because the car was Canadian. And at the time, it was still, you know, like now you can bring these into the country because it's over what 25 excuse me 25 years um right back then you couldn't so they literally disassembled the car Uh, in canada (laughs) they took it apart they took the engine out they took all the body panels that would come off of it they took it apart and put it in a shipping container and (laughs) carried across and they put it back together and yes at that point it had a branded title but it had never been wrecked it never had but that was the only way you could get that car in the country uh boy this was probably 11 years ago i remember them struggling he's like on yeah we're hoping we can get two hundred thousand for it (laughs) a gt2 evo now what's that it's 1.5 million dollar car 1.5 million dollar car so things have changed a little bit this is not a 1.5 million dollar car uh but it certainly is special yeah. and will bring some big big money uh what's your prediction yeah. deep what do you think this thing will bring so so top dollar for one of these cars is is half a million dollars five hundred thousand uh don't think that happened here our car is sitting at two hundred and ten thousand dollars out of indiana on uh, and it closes in five days and jp i think it's going to do really well I'm going to go $450,000, and I think it sells at that price. Uh, but there is not a lot of comps to go on. It, it, I, I will say this. These cars are less expensive overseas than they are here, which is why people who can afford to are bringing them in. Um, I think just having one on the ground here creates equity. Uh, and so I think Graham brought this car in, and he's going to flip it. And at 450 I think he's going to make some money. Uh, and I think if that number is realized i bet it'll put a smile on rami's face yeah uh i'm gonna say 375 on this car uh really? i think yeah because of I the think, title i think the title isn't a, that big a deal uh but it is significant and i also think that um you know look uh, things we talk about economy and things are shifting a little bit i just don't think i think those big top dollar numbers aren't going to happen and also this car is very difficult to get but it's not impossible like it used to be uh not too long ago let me let me ask one qualifier to your bid at 375 do you think it's a it's a sale or a no sale Mm, that's a very good question um yeah, I'll say that's an FTS. That's a good point. That's a good okay. point because right. I think he's, his yeah. reserve is probably four hundred. Would be my guess. Yeah, and I think and I think he paid and, and brought it in well over three. So at three seventy five, I don't think that's enough margin for all the trouble he went through to get it here. Yeah. Um, even if he drove it and enjoyed it for a couple months, and Graham could afford to sell it and not make any money, um, but I just I I, I agree with you at three seventy five, which is where it could land. Um, I would think it, I also agree that it would fail to sell. And we'll out in just a couple seconds. So, yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing. We're going to find out in just a moment. But first, you should go ahead and hit the subscribe, like, and notification oh, yeah. button right now. Smash and if it. you do so, if you smash that like button, we will go ahead and tell you how much this car sells for or fails to sell for right after this. Okay, guys, I want to tell you about vegas auto fest the drivers are coming this is one of our big sponsors it's the biggest car show of the year in las vegas it's one of the coolest car shows you can possibly experience anywhere if you haven't made plans to be part of vegas auto fest on september 17th then do it now go to vegasautofest.com 
and register your car. You think you're a car enthusiast? Doesn't matter where you live, plan a trip to Vegas on September 17th and come out and see this show. It's like Monterey Car Week all in a day. Have you ever been to the Quail? Have you ever been to Works Reunion? Have you ever been to Amelia Island? All those car shows are amazing and great. Have you been to Luftkult? Sure, but Vegas Auto Fest is something special. Make a plan for September 17th. We'll see you in Vegas. Hey guys, welcome back to Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. I do believe this is one of the most interesting cars and maybe one of the best cars of all time. What do we think? Is this one of the most amazing auction results of all time? What do you think, Michael Deep? No, I, I'm, I'm, look, listen, okay, here's the deal. So what we're looking at is this 1996 Porsche 911 Carrera RS that Graham Rahal, uh, IndyCar driver and son of the legendary uh, uh, Bobby Rahal, um, he owns a car dealership. I think it's out there in like Indiana or some the middle of nowhere. Um, and Graham loves cool exotic cars and he's got means he buy them and he flips them. So this is one of his cars. I think he imported the car in April. So in May, they took the car to the DMV in Bramberg, Indiana, right? Am I saying that correctly? Uh, Brownsburg, Indiana. So, do you think that a girl, work, a clerk working the desk at the DMV, Brownsburg, Indiana, understands you know, how exotic and special this car is? So, the Fairfax has uh, a mark on it that says not the actual mileage. And it's probably because it's true mileage unknown, probably coming in in kilometers and having no history in the US. So, I don't think that this unusual branded title would slow this car down. As such, I thought this uber rare 911 Carrera RS, 993 RS, like literally the holy grail. Our buddy Rami just got one, and he worships the damn thing. I thought the car was worth and could bring $450,000. Again, my partner didn't like the branded title. Carfaxes that have like small accidents don't bother him, but the branded title did. And I kind of understand that, but I think you just have to take a step back and look at the bigger context here. So JP, you said 375,000. And again, your evidence was the title. Our car sold on 45 bids for $411,993. And I'd say that's pretty much right on the money. The irony is, did you realize, JP, with the $75,000 between us in our two bids, this car split the difference by just $1,006. So you beat me by $1,006. So you won that one. Uh, but I would still say that that I feel like because it broke 400 grand, I'm more right than you because I think that that's a, a retail number and I don't know that's reflective of a branded style. So, what do you think of that result? Do you think that that's crazy? Do you think they left money on the table? Maybe would that car have brought 500 grand if they're in a branded title? I think that's all the car. Just came into the country this year. Yeah, I don't have any problem with the title, obviously, personally. Yeah. Would that make me, me not want to own or buy or drive this car? Uh, hell no. Of course, I'd be all over this car. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't pay a premium for it. Um, and maybe that that brand can be corrected at some point. Maybe every one of them that comes into the country has this problem. Uh, you mentioned our friend Rami's. I haven't seen the title on his. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know if he's a part of the gang yet. thing. Yeah, I mean, so it'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah to see what yeah. happens with the documentation on a car like this that can't be tracked. There's, I mean, how the heck do you know? Uh, one thing I know that it was a great time this weekend. We, uh, we do our show, our car show in the arts district in Las Vegas, the cars, the, Good Cafe, Wolf. the last Sunday of every month in front of the Good Wolf. That's correct. Um, shout out to those guys. And uh, Rami brought out his polar silver RS and Ooh, we had him park it right sexy. in front. Yeah, and it's so funny. You know, Rami's just the greatest when it comes to, hey, park this as close to the wall as you can. And he just throws it in reverse. And everyone's oh. like, oh, no, oh, my God. I mean, he missed the wall. <laughs> and I know he wants to say it was skill, but no, it was dumb luck, man. He was so close to hitting that wall. Uh, uh, I want to yeah. know, did, did Rami eat breakfast off the rear wing of his car? Because he seems like the type of guy that would. You know, like uh, put his coffee down, put sure. his cell phone down. You're like, what are you doing, man? Don't scratch the paint on your 
half a million dollar car and he's like who gives a shit you know our boy rami is uh <laughs> not drinking coffee in the morning so there was no coffee yeah. cups to but no look it was you're right um one of the fun things from yesterday on this car uh was that or not this car but on his car was that uh-huh. i kept telling I, I told a couple of people yeah you know go tap the rear glass on this car just, yeah. Just with your, you know, just tap, 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 and you can immediate, you can feel how thin the glass is on the rear yeah. lid because, like yeah. we mentioned before, it, it flexes. Was like, <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah. it's like, um, you know, so you know, a couple people did it, and then like every single person walking by the car is tapping on the glass. So <laughs> it was like there's a hundred people tapped on the rear, uh, rear That's lid. Funny. No. Uh, look, the result on this car, I, yeah, I think it's a good result. Um, I do. You know, I, I it's it's a bummer because I think American titling just is not going to be able to handle this. It's just going to nah. be a problem no matter what. So who cares? Great car. One of the best cars of all time, like we said before. Um, and I just hope whoever buys it just puts a bunch of miles on it. I hope this is an excuse to put miles on it since who cares what the odometer says, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, we don't know what the story is. Uh, in Brownsburg, Indiana, back in the spring when this car came into this country, is it that they couldn't verify the miles because it had no history? Is it because it was in kilometers? Is it because the uh, EPA um, or DOT forced them to put in a, a new odometer that read in miles instead of kilometers? Therefore, it's not the actual mileage. Uh, you know, it just seems silly that this title was brand because you know there's not any malice going on here. It's just a car that was recently imported, and so I think that was a mistake on the DMV and should not have held it back. I think this result is reflective of the fact that the car is special and that the title, not not so much that the title was branded. Um, maybe he could have got a few more dollars, but I still, I bet he's still happy with that number. The car sold at that price. So there you go, man, that's it, 993RS. You can tell Ronnie's car is worth a half a million dollars if he doesn't get a branded title. Remains to be seen if that's the case. Uh, I don't think he'll be selling it anytime soon. So no, <laughs> I don't think it matters. All right, guys. Well, there it is. What do you think of the results of this car? Uh, do you think the branded title made a difference? Uh, would you buy this car uh, with a branded title? Would you care? Um, Tell us in the comments below. Hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. We nerd out on the most interesting car of the day every day on the YouTube machine at Bid Nerds. See you guys. Get those nerds!